Hey guys, this is Point Shooter. Today I'm going to do another knife review. This time I'm going to review a Wahoo Killer Filet Knife. Now if you guys saw my Intro to Survival Snares video, you've already seen this one. In the video I mentioned that I had a new Mora Clipper. Uh, that's pretty much where I informally uh, refer to this by, but it actually is not made by Mora. It's by Wahoo Killer. Uh, they're sort of a knockoff of the Mora Clipper series and I found it locally pretty cheap about eight bucks and I figured yeah, I'd give it a try. What you can see right here is it's about a four inch blade, it's stainless steel, comes with a rubber handle and a nice plastic sheath. Now the reason I went for Amora was I'm very partial to uh, Cody Lundin and his philosophy of survival. I like his style of bushcrafting where he uses smaller blades like this rather than the large uh, Pathfinder knives or knives like the Artac 2 or anything like that. What I like about this is that it's small and it doesn't get in the way, it's unobtrusive and it's less frightening to the sheep. Where I hike, I usually have a Glock knife with me if I'm out doing any sort of bushcrafting, but I find that sometimes it attracts more attention than I want. There's nothing wrong with having it, of course, but at the same point, it's not always the nicest way to have other people see on the trail. You know, they see a guy with a Glock knife strapped to his pack, they probably think what's going on with that. So the Mora knife is very small and can just be clipped on the pack and it's, uh, it's basically like a fishing knife. Now they describe it as a fillet knife but I don't agree with that mostly because of the the strength here and also the width of the blade. Again it's four inches long it's about three quarters of an inch wide. A fillet knife in my opinion should come to a very very thin point up here and this knife really doesn't work for that. I'm sure it would be fine for uh, gutting fish or other animals but it's really in my opinion more of a utility knife. 4 inch blade, the specs on this one are that the knife itself weighs 2.4 ounces, the sheath is another 1.4, so overall you've got about a 3.8 ounce package. This is just blue electrical tape, 3M tape that I put on there. It's uh, hard plastic, it's got a drainage hole on the bottom, and it's got this nice solid clip here. It fits real well on your belt. If you wear a thick BDU belt like I do, sometimes this will slip off because it doesn't have anywhere to really grip to, but if you wear a thinner belt, this is about an inch and a quarter wide. So that works pretty well for something smaller because it can clip over and lock on. I find it real, really works well on a pack strap because it can fit over that uh, narrow nylon and really lock in there. Out of the box, had about a 35, maybe 40 degree grind on it. Not terrible out of the box, but it was just very, very small bevel. Uh, it is saber ground as you can see. Down here at the bottom, it's funny, it looks hollow ground. It has just this tiny bit of a hollow ground feeling. Really not sure how to describe the grind there. It's not really a true hollow ground, but it, it works very well. Uh, out of the box, if you touched it up a little bit, you could slice paper with it fine. Uh, I did on several occasions. You could, you know, take the hair off your arm. But what I did was, like most of my knives, I reprofiled it. I took an electric uh, power, power sander, a uh, belt sander, and I reprofiled it to 20 degrees. Always remember when you're doing this to keep your blade cool with water. You don't want to destroy the temper. What I did then was I brought it to 20 and used ceramic stones, or ceramic sticks rather, to bring it to the desired sharpness. And I'll tell you, it slices, oops, really slices well. This is uh, about the third take on this video, so I'm running out of paper here. Out of the box, the edge, as I said, is not terrible, but it could use a little bit of improvement. I paid about eight bucks for mine. What I've seen now is that on BUDK and other websites, you can get them as low as $1.99 a piece, and I think that they're a great value. So I would be uh, very happy to pick up a couple more of these, and I probably will to stick in my other kits. Uh, generally, my philosophy is that any kit that I have, survival kit uh, or other kind of kit, bug out bag, needs to have a couple items in it. A uh, cut, good cutting tool, fixed blade cutting tool, way to start fire, signaling device, and a way to purify water. So pretty much that means that every kit I have has a fixed blade knife, a ferro rod, and some sort of metal container in it. And normally uh, I've been having folding knives or lockback knives in most of my kits, but uh, for $1.99 you can't go wrong with these. Uh, even if they were a couple bucks more, I would not be hesitant to buy a couple of these. I think there's a great alternative to the Mora knife. Not knocking the Mora knife, they're great, I've used them before. I really enjoy them, but for the price, you can't beat it. You've got real solid retention in the sheath. Uh, it is right-handed. Uh, for lefties like me, you can reverse it, 
but personally I just carry everything on my right side anyways. Uh, I've gotten used to that from years and years of EDCing uh, right hand only blades, so I've gotten used to carrying this on my right side. One of the things that I think is a disadvantage is that it is a very short blade. So for serious bushcrafting or survival use, this isn't going to give you a, a lot of options. What I've done is I've uh, chopped a little bit with it. There's just not enough heft to do much. The knife I'd compare this to, other than Mora knives, of which is a direct copy, is the Cold Steel Roach Belly, uh, which I've had the chance to use. One of the advantages of that uh, knife is that it has jimping up here, and I'm thinking I might add some for some fine detail work. It has a nice little choil here, uh, well, it's not really a choil, but it's an area where you can grip for uh, up-close detail work. I find it works real well for small whittling and other bushcraft use. Honestly, this makes a great backup knife to a larger survival knife, maybe an Artec 2 or a K-Bar. If you have, if you only had this, I still think you'd have pretty good capabilities. It's stainless steel and it's made in China, so it's probably not the best, but it's been sitting out in pretty high humidity, about 80 to 90 percent for the past week, and I haven't noticed any discoloration on the blade. It's been wet, it's been through uh, wet wood, haven't had any problems yet, so I'd say the stainless is pretty good so far. Uh, there's definitely a discoloration on the back where you can see where my ferro rods hit it, and that's one of the things that I really like about the flat ground on the back is that you can take your ferro rod. I wasn't going to demonstrate this in the house, but give you a quick little strike there and you can see it works really well to strike your ferro rod. Overall, with a little bit of modification, this becomes a great bushcrafting knife, a great backup survival knife, or if you just want to outfit a couple kits, it would work great for that at the price. It makes a great fishing knife. I would be happy to add this to my fishing tackle box and will once I get a couple more of them. Again, it's Wahoo Killer. It's not really a, a name brand as far as I know, but I think it's a great alternative to the Mora knife, and if I ever get one, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison at some point. Well, friends, this is Point Shooter signing out on this video. Hope you all stay safe in the heat. Feel free to get in touch if you have any comments or questions, and please subscribe for more fun reviews like this. Hope you all take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.